Limloss.org, educating, enabling, and empowering the amputee community. As your guide taking you through the prosthetic fitting process, I want you to become very familiar with the five different parts of your prosthesis. The more you know about each of these five different parts and what they do and the options available to you for each part, the smoother your fitting is going to go and the more success you're going to have. By way of overview, the five different parts of your prosthesis are first, the suspension, second, the socket, third, the shank, fourth, the foot, and finally, the alignment. First, let's talk about suspension. Suspension is the part of the prosthesis that prevents it from falling off of your limb while you walk. Now, there are a few different methods for accomplishing this, but most modern methods use what's called a gel liner. A gel liner is a device that's rolled onto your limb, and once it's rolled on, it doesn't come off until you want it to. Now, some gel liners are called locking gel liners. That means that they have a pin built into the bottom end. Now that pin, as you place your residual limb into the socket, the pin engages a lock that's built into it, and then it's locked on. It won't come off until you push a push button release that's located discreetly and conveniently on the side of your prosthesis. Now there are a couple of other methods of suspension, but I don't want to make things too complicated. So what I want you to know is that suspension is the part that keeps it from falling off. Next, let's cover the socket. The socket is the part of your prosthesis that's very, very important because it's the part that your residual limb slides into. You've got to remember, your residual limb wasn't built to bear weight. So a lot of your practitioner's skill and expertise goes into creating a socket that applies pressure to your limb in a way that's both comfortable and highly functional. Now there are a couple of different types of sockets and they apply pressure in different ways. But the ultimate thing that you want to remember is that both types of sockets are designed to make sure that you're comfortable and you're able to use them with a lot of control. Next, let's talk about the shank. You want to think of the shank like you do a shin bone. Basically, it's the part of the prosthesis that connects the socket to the foot. Now, from a prosthetic point of view, if we have enough room to work with in this area, it's a very clever place to put in what's called a special adapter. Now, there are a bunch of different types of special adapters available, and they can perform special functions for different tasks that you might have. The most common type of special adapter is what's called a rotational absorber. Basically, it's an added cushion that absorbs any sort of twisting motion that your prosthesis can put on your limb. Now, without a rotational absorber, sometimes those rotational forces, like for example if you're swinging a golf club, can be really uncomfortable um, because that twisting motion can kind of jar your limb. Well, a rotational absorber like this one is a great way to improve the comfort of your prosthesis. For a more complete understanding of the different types of special adapters available to you, you can visit our product review page and search around there. Moving on to the foot. You want to think of a prosthetic foot like you do a car. Basically, there are a ton of different manufacturers and models available to you, but they're all designed to get you from point A to point B, sometimes in different ways. For example, there are feet out there that are more rugged and they're designed to adapt to uneven terrain, much like an SUV. There are also feet out there a lot like a Cadillac, meaning they contain what's called microprocessor technology. They can automatically detect when you're on a ramp or a slope, whether you're on stairs, whether you're in a standing or a seated position, and they can adapt automatically to your changing environment. And now there's a ton of different types of feet in between those as well. Different feet perform different functions just like cars do. So, using that same analogy, it's very important that before you begin the prosthetic process, while you're shopping around for your practitioner, it's a great idea 
to ask your practitioner if they're willing to let you test drive different feet, just like you would a car. You wouldn't want to purchase a car without test driving at first. I think it's even more important that you test drive your foot first, and so that way you make sure that you're getting the right foot for your needs. So make sure that you look around and find a practitioner that's willing to allow you to do that. And finally, moving on to the alignment of your prosthesis. The alignment isn't necessarily a physical part of your prosthesis. Rather, it's something that you can feel. What I mean by that is the alignment is the spatial relationship between the socket and the foot. Now, in prosthetics, we have different components that are built into the prosthesis that allow us to make certain changes to the alignment. These tiny changes to the alignment translate to huge differences in the way it feels while you walk. For example, a couple of different ways is that number one, we can change what's called the toe in and toe out. Now I've loosened up the set screws already, but on this prosthesis you can see that you know, the toe in and toe out angle can be adjusted really easily. Now, the socket can be moved in or outside of the foot. It can also be moved forward or back. Um, you can change the height of the prosthesis, so on and so forth. You're going to spend quite a bit of time with your practitioner perfecting the alignment of your prosthesis. The better your alignment becomes, the more natural and smooth your walking gait becomes, and the more functional you'll be with your prosthesis. So keep that in mind. As you go through your prosthetic fitting, you're going to be doing lap after lap in the parallel bars while your practitioner watches you walk. While they're watching you, they're observing different alignment of your prosthesis. And they can tell what changes they need to make. That's a huge part of their education and their training. So you'll be walking many, many laps trying to perfect the alignment of your prosthesis. Be sure to check out the next video in our tutorial series entitled, Meeting Your Practitioner. In it, we'll teach you which qualities to look for in your practitioner to ensure that you have a really good working relationship. Doing so is absolutely critical to your rehab outcome. In addition, we'll also familiarize you with the different areas of your practitioner's office, so that way you know what to expect when you get there. Limloss.org, educating, enabling, and empowering the amputee community.